Yo, Elliot, I have been attending a Catholic church since beginning Exodus. I really liked this church at first, but began to notice more and more that the priest is very, let's say, blue pill. He constantly talks about and supports the popular narrative like mask wearing, vaccines, and the mainstream things. Last Sunday, he announced that he would be pushing for some changes in the church, such as having women more involved in making decisions and giving them more power, also making way for, to accommodate the LGBT people. Reasons for this were listening to the community and bringing the church up to date with modern culture. Obviously, this goes against the traditional church values. I couldn't help but to think that Satan is within the church. Am I overreacting or should I seek out a more traditional church? I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. First of all, I got to uh, suggest a book for you to read so that everybody understands what's going on with the church. It has been infiltrated. All the, all the bad things you're seeing happening in the church have been a result of an infiltration process that has been happening since at least, since at least the 1950s. And it's all documented in a book called Infiltration by um, Taylor Marshall, Dr. Taylor Marshall. He's not the only one that's written about this. There's lots of YouTube videos, a lot of documentaries about this. Uh, it has been known for a long time that the smoke of Satan has entered the church through many different ways, but one of which is there's a woman named Bella Dodd. The plot to destroy the church. Thank you, Rob. There's a woman named Bella Dodd who has admitted because she was converted to Catholicism, but beforehand she was a enemy to the church that they put a hundred, or I think she said 1,500 of their men, Marxist, homosexuals, uh, communist, in the seminary. So, and that happened in like the 1960s. So right now we're, we're experiencing the fruit of those seeds that we're planting in the church right now. So we've got all these blue pill homosexual priests that gave us scandal, right? They were doing their homosexual things with the boys, right? Those weren't legitimate Catholic priests. Those were infiltrates. They were subverters. They were snuck in there, right? Any negative feelings you have about the church itself, you've got to understand that the smoke of Satan has seeped in and it was from the outside in. Even the papacy, I don't know, but Pope Francis acts a lot like a Freemason. And if you know anything about the history of Freemasonry and the Catholic Church, they're at odds, completely at odds. And the goal of the Freemason has always been to destroy the Catholic Church. They're doing a pretty good job through infiltration, getting, and it, this is all documented. I'm not making this stuff up. The whole idea was to get their own man in the church, which I think they may have done, but they've probably done it for a while too. I think a lot of people say that about John, Pope John Paul II. I don't know. I'm a new Catholic. I, I'm just trying to learn stuff. So if you find, if you start to smell the scent of Marxism, LGBT, blue pill, feminism in the church, you got to understand that that church, the, the smoke of Satan is deep within, especially if it's coming from the, from the, from the leadership. And you need to find a different one. You do. You really do. Because you're going to be totally, you're going to be disenchanted. You're going to be disserved. You're going to be disappointed. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a problem. I would rather you leave that and find a traditional church than to start to hate the church, especially since you just started coming back. That's a church. That's, that's not a good church. The Catholic Church is really very conservative when it's being itself. And so you have to find out, you got to look for places where the church is actually being the church and where the church is being the world. This whole idea of bringing the community up to modern culture, that doesn't work. The church is the church is the church for 2,000 years. Tradition, tradition, tradition. That's what makes Catholic different than Protestant, that we have tradition. 2,000 years of tradition. Protestants can change their mind about thing, anything they want. They make up their own stuff anytime. They're not held to any standard. But the Catholic Church is actually held to an apostolic tradition. Our traditions have been passed down from the apostles. And they cannot change, right? And it will all go back to the way it's supposed to be. But right now, the church is going through its passion. Which means if the church is really the body of Christ, it needs to go through a time of betrayal and a time of persecution. 
And what do we have right now? Just like Judas betrayed and he was persecuted by you know, Pontius Pilate and the, and the Jews, right? It's the same way the church is going through its betrayal, all the infiltration and the Freemasonry and the homosexuality and all the, all the bad stuff. There's a betrayal. And it's, our bishops are betraying us in that regard. Our magisterium is betraying us in that regard. The, the betrayal is from within, right? Judas was one of his 12, was one of Jesus' 12. Jesus was infiltrated, essentially. His 12 was infiltrated. It was from within. So his betrayal was from within. As the body of Christ, we're going through a betrayal from within, so we have to go through this. But just the same way that Christ is risen, the church will rise again. It has to go through its passion. And we're seeing it just, I mean, we're being nailed to the cross right now. This is ridiculous. But, but anyway... And it's not that the church doesn't love all people. It's just the church is there to serve people in going the right way. You don't bend 2,000 years of tradition to go the way of the world. You require the world to bend the way to tradition. I was with our catechist this week, and she was talking to the kids about uh, homosexuals. The church doesn't hate homosexuals. Don't let the Marxists tell you any differently or the rainbow cult to tell you any differently. The church was very welcome to homosexuals, but requires, just like it does for everyone else, that you work through your sin, right? You don't fornicate, right? LGBT is a fruit of hookup culture. They kind of work the same. Right? We have hookup culture and LGBT. They're both the same thing. Hookup culture and LGBT is all about having fun sex. Right? Having, having gay sex, butt sex, is about having sex without any responsibility. Same thing with uh, con contraceptive sex. That's what E. Michael Jones talks about. Contraceptive sex is basically homosexual sex because it comes from that same sentiment. In the same way that Say I'm a lustful man and I want to have sex outside of my marriage. The church is going to hold me to a, hold me to a standard and say, no, 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 Elliot, we love you. I understand that you're battling with some sin. We're not going to condone that sin, but we want to help you. To invite LGBT people into the church is a beautiful thing. It's the right thing to do. But you don't say, yes, go and fornicate. Yes, we're going to bless your unholy union. Yes, we're going to bless your disordered marriage, right? Made up, imaginary marriage, right? You don't, this is another thing, even with like uh, transgender people. We well, don't help people by facilitating or, or um, what's that word? When you let them do it and you help them do it, their sin, right? You don't help people by enabling their problems, you say, oh, I notice you have a problem, right? This is why it's so diabolical that they use the word pride. Do you notice LGBT uses pride? What is pride? Pride is the first sin. Pride is the, most, is the gravest sin. Pride. You say pride, they know what you're talking about right away, which basically means I'm proud in my sin. I'm not going to repent for my sin. I'm going to flaunt my sin, and I'm going to do it, and you have to accept this marching through your street every every year in June, which used to be Father's Month. Notice? Father's Day month is no longer Father's Day month. Google doesn't recognize Father's Day. It's not the month of Father's Day. It's LGBT Rainbow Day. It's Pride Month, the most diabolical month in the, in the year. You have compassion for these people. You don't enable and tell them be proud. But I tell you what the world is doing, I, I feel bad for a lot of these really confused LGBT people, the world is using them. I tell this to a lot of people, even my children, right? Because they listen to, the, to stuff on YouTube and TikTok and they think it's okay. I've schooled them on this enough so they know. They don't come to me with that bullshit. If the world supports you, if Hollywood supports you, if the government supports you, pop culture supports you, you're not oppressed. You're being used. 
These people are a pawn. They're being used as a crowbar to destroy our culture. With the word pride and with the destruction of family. They're being used. I, I have compassion in that regard. Wow. You know, rather than trying to help people, we're using them. So anyway, that's my little rant on LGBT. But the point here is, you got to go find another church. Rob has given you a lot of good links here. Um, a lot of good links. Thank Rob. Uh, Al, uh, Alta Vendita link. Thank you for sharing that. That's at Fatima.org. If you guys are Catholic, you should be going. You should be checking out Fatima, F-A-T-I-M-A.org. Bella Dot information. I don't have this, so I'm going to click it myself. Rob, thank you. Rob is a wealth of information for Catholics. Uh, infiltration. You should get that book. The plot to destroy the church from within. Yep, that's. Uh, and then also he makes some good suggestions. Find a traditional Latin mass. I found a I found a traditional mass after doing that one video where I was telling you guys like if you can't find a traditional mass, don't worry about it. I found one. It's forty. It's forty minutes away. I went last week. I went Friday night, and I liked it a lot. I'm gonna keep going back. It's a lot further, but I'm gonna keep going. There's SSPX. There's FSSP. Look around, bro. You'll find something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you're on the right track. Don't don't tolerate it. Don't tolerate it. And don't, definitely don't give them your money. <laughs> don't give them your time. Don't give them your money. Go and find something. And here's the thing. One last thing with regard to a lot of the issues in the Catholic Church. Just because a church is Novo, and I'm kind of saying what I said last time, just because a church holds a Novo Ordo Mass, not a traditional Latin Mass, doesn't mean that it's not a reverent church. And one of the ways that you can just, now, of course, your church is not reverent. You, you already figured that out. These, these are big red flags. But very simple red flags to see whether or not they're traditional, even though it's Novo Ordo, is do they allow for reception of the Eucharist on the tongue? Because some of these places, they will not. They are a part of the world, right? They're, either COVID scared them or they get done away with that a long time ago. So you should be able to receive the Eucharist on the tongue and you should also be able to get a priest for confession very easily, multiple times a week. If they have the, one of these things where it's like confession is once a month or something like that, you're in the wrong place. So those are two things that I forgot to mention in that one video. Um, and I just wanted to add this also. The traditional church that I found is so, is so odd, but it's so awesome. It's a traditional last mass, but it's not in Latin. Everything they did was traditional, from the way the priest faced Christ instead of the people, to even the prayers they were praying. Because I remember going to Latin mass and learning Latin, and I remember the prayers were a little different, more elaborate. And they were doing all the Latin prayers, but in English. It's really a gem that I found. And they're of a particular order. I think they call it the something of St. Peter order. Um, that you could probably look up and find more of them around. But I was like, this is the coolest place. So I might make my way out there once a month or something like that, or maybe even once a week, we'll see. But the whole point is that um, you, you can find, you, you can and you should find something better. It's unfortunate that the church can't be a safe haven in this regard for true tradition and conservative real Christianity. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's a part of the passion. And I would, I would venture to say also, I said this the previous week when I talked about this, that this is the part of our punishment. This is a part of our punishment for going the way of the world. Christ, I think it was the Our Lady of Fatima, I don't remember who said it, but said that, oh, I think it was Our Lady of Good Success, said that it'll be very hard to find good priests. That will be a part of our chastisement. It will be very hard for you to find good. And the sacraments are going to be limited and they won't be available to us. That's basically what we're getting. So it's a part of our chastisement. Offer it up. Suffer. But you, you could probably do better. I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me.
So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.